Hello. I know I look like I just woke up. It's because I just woke up. And I know it's been a while since I've done an acting analysis, but here I am again to do another one. Between coming up with new video ideas and just creating a lot of different series and, and finding out what the flow is going to be, uh, it obviously had to take a while to make the next acting analysis. I've even made an intro, and I enjoyed doing these from the beginning because they were something unique and new, and obviously you guys felt that way too because the General Ortega acting analysis is my best video just ever. And so I hope to find more success with more of these just because. And that being said, this is a new one that I'm pretty sure a lot of people expected and a lot of people anticipated because I've teased it for a while following another acting analysis I'll be doing shortly after this one. This is an actress that I found a, a new love for while her projects have been coming out throughout the year and I've gotten to see some of her acting chops and whatnot and I've been like blown away. And practically everybody loves her now and I understand why. And that actress is Mia Goth. It just seems fitting that with the release of Pearl yesterday on physical media, which I begged the Target employee to go to the back and bring one out for me because they still hadn't set it up yet and it was already sold out at Walmart. Well, uh, it just makes sense that I should be making this video right now. Amidst all the praise that I've already given her in other videos, especially my uh, hours review for Pearl, but I think we should highlight her career, not just because it's really good, but because of how short-lived it's been so far and the potential for it to grow even more. Like I went into this not knowing Mia Goth all that well and finding out that she's only been acting for so long. Like you'd think that there'd be a lot of projects that she's been in and it, it would have been like, you know, decades, but it's really only been such a short career so far with such great success that I kind of had to share it. Pulling out my phone for this one because I have a script this time around. It's very rare when I actually write down information and recite it word for word, but it's not like an offhand review or anything. This is something I actually needed to do research for, so uh, yes. So Mia Goth, full name Mia Gypsy Mayo de Silva Goth, coolest fucking name I've ever heard, was born in London and is of British, Canadian, Brazilian descent. All right, now getting into it, why did she start getting into acting? Well, it started in her earlier years, around the time that she was 14 or so. Uh, she had done plays and stuff, according to the research, and she was found by Gemma Booth. Gemma Booth, being a fashion photographer, signed her for uh, store model management. And Mia Goth appeared in ads for like Vogue and Miu Miu. Now her first movie auditions were around 16, and she actually won a role in Nymphomaniac. Um, this starred Willem Dafoe and such. Um, she was in a segment called The Gun. Now Nymphomaniac being her first film, she also did star in a music video uh, called Haunted Love, directed by Shia LaBeouf. And she was also in a short film called Magpie. She got a lead role in The Survivalist and also worked in television, like in the show Wallander, although that wasn't her first television role. That would happen to be The Tunnel. As time goes by and she gets more roles, she kind of gets herself into movies like A Cure for Wellness, but she is probably most known for, uh, outside of the newer stuff, Suspiria, the remake of Suspiria, in which I think she has a fairly good role, honestly. And then she had just started working on other projects like High Life, which is super, super good sci-fi. She was in Emma, she was in Mayday. She also stars in a short film called The Staggering Girl. And then we roll into Mia Goth in her most recent projects. And this is really where a lot of this fame peeks into. Because Mia Goth was a name, you know, she was known, but it was Ty West's ex that really set the stage and C and X, she's not even the lead role because, because she's surrounded by a cast with other star-studded names like Jenna Ortega, Kid Cudi, Britney Snow, more familiar to audiences. And I've mentioned that I love X, but the real kicker is, spoiler alert, skip like three seconds ahead if you don't already know. Mia Goth's character Maxine is the final girl and Mia Goth also plays Pearl in X. She did two roles in that movie, which honestly I didn't know about until after the movie. And a lot of people also did not know until after the movie. And then you look back at it and you're like, well, Mia Goth had much more significant part in this movie. It's, it's really, really cool. And then Pearl was announced and it was already filmed and it was already coming out that year too. And Pearl is, I'm not even gonna get into that yet cause, cause we will, but two movies being released the same year in the same franchise and whatnot, it is such a risk, especially for indie projects. You know, it's not like a Godzilla or a Marvel movie. Like you don't know about the success of, of the one that's coming out prior to your sequel or prequel or whatever it is. 
It's such a risk and it paid off so well. I have never seen something like this or at least lived in a time frame like this where an indie project like that has two movies back to back in the same year. Again, this is not Marvel and this is not Godzilla or whatever franchise you want to mention that has done this before because it's just a smaller original thing. And I'm so glad that they did it because Pearl is Mia Goth's lead role. This is her star moment. There is no other star studded cast around her for the most part. It's just her, her, her acting and her writing as well. Ty West's direction and his editing and also his writing is probably the best movie of the year personally. Um, and that's considering that I also think the Batman and everything everywhere all at once are also going to be some Oscar nom hitters and all three of those films are probably going to win awards. But man, when I get into Pearl later into the video, you are going to kind of understand. Now, in terms of TV, there hasn't been any recent projects since Wallander, but you never know what's in pre-production. So now we're going to get into weakest and strongest role. And this is one of those cases, again, where the actor or actress is good at what they do. They haven't given a role that is just bad. In fact, it's once again the material that they are given in the direction that they're given. And you'll find that a lot with actors that people know and like is, you know, even their bad films, their acting is not that bad. It's just the nature of the beast. If the film sucks, film sucks. In Mia Goth's case, it's a little bit more different because it's kind of just a, well, we're looking back at acting that has improved so much more and we have to talk about it as the weakest one. I'm gonna have to say her weakest role is a cure for wellness. She does a good job with what she is given and when she's on the screen, it's, it's Mia Goth. It's like, oh, okay, I'm watching her. I like what she's doing. She's doing good, but it's not the most engaging. And outside of researching for this video, I just kind of forgot it was a thing. And it's not that it's a bad movie. It's just average movies do exist. And it was between this or Marrowbone. And you know what? Despite the criticism, I think Marrowbone is a much better film than most people give it credit to be. And I think in terms of Mia Goth's acting, it's also pretty damn good. But Mia Goth has been in High Life and Pearl and X, so I mean, she's just getting better and better and now these movies are kind of going lower on the list. She's suffering from success, I don't know what to say. I could have also mentioned Everest as her weakest role, but that feels like such a cop-out because it's not that big of a role. Complete 180. Mia Goth's strongest role, Pearl. Pearl stands on the shoulders of X, and without X, there would be no Pearl. However, this is one thing. One thing that I love about this specifically is that it proves if you have a film where you want to create a world and your base is fundamentally strong, you can make a prequel or a sequel that stands on those shoulders and does it better. And people will be like, oh, I like Pearl better, and uh, they're both good. They just know how to fucking improve. You rewatch X after watching Pearl and you catch so many things you didn't notice. And I need to mention this real quick. Mia Goth's acting is outstanding in both of these films, more so Pearl, but she also was writing. Mia Goth's ability to get into the character's head so much is not just because she was given material, she had part in making the material. This blew my mind. It was similar to when I found out that Ty West edited the films and I was like, oh, he edited them too? This is really, really good. He knows what he's doing. Um, Mia Goth knows what the fuck she's doing when it comes to screenwriting. She's written such a complex character and had the ability to act it as well. I mean, I feel like that in some sense gives the actor such a, such a better visualization of what they want to do. But writing is not easy. Acting is even harder because I can't remember certain things from scripts. Hell, I'm reading the script right now and I'm going off script. So if I had to deal with like a director that was really anal about it, I would be fucked. But she has the ability to create these monologues and recite them and give depth to a character that we already saw and we don't have any previous knowledge about in the last film and up it, just up it to the next level. The guttural reactions, the emotions, it's just, it's something about it that makes Pearl her best role and outside of an acting perspective, just also the ability to write a character so well. And it just seems like the teamwork too between her and Ty West and everyone else involved, like this is her film. This is as much her film as it is Ty West's and not just because she stars in it. It's amazing. It was phenomenal. There was a clear vision for the character and for the story. 
and I think it is her best role as of right now. There's gonna be more. Maxine is coming up soon as well, so I'm very excited about that. And I would love to see Mia Goth direct. I know she can direct. Just from the writing and acting alone, she has the chops to where in a couple years, I'm not gonna be surprised if she is directing her first feature, directorial debut or whatnot. And I'm sure she probably has had a hand behind the scenes doing stuff like that. We just don't know about it. Or maybe I don't know about it because I'm dumb. But I just, I'm so excited for this woman. I want to see her make more and more and more. And I feel like directing is probably her best suit after writing. She can already act her ass off. That'd be a fucking trio. And the future, I've already mentioned Maxine. That's gonna be the third film in the X world and I'm very excited for it. I know they did an audition casting call thing for an extra and I had made a video and I do cringe at myself when I see myself act, but the point is that I want to be an extra. Who doesn't? Anyways, that aside, yes, the third film is coming out and it doesn't seem like they're gonna stop there because they keep mentioning a world and a universe and this and that, and I would love to see more films in the X franchise. Aside from Ty West's universe, there's also The Infinity Pool, which is complete as of today, so that'll be out eventually, and Sweet Dreams, which is in post-production. And from what I can gather on her goals as an actress is that she just wants to do her best. This is what I've been able to research, but she just wants to give it her all and and improve and, and do what she can as an actress. And you know what, I don't blame her. I can see in the direction that she's going that she's already managed to do so much in such a little time frame that it's mind boggling. She's like, what, 28? It's crazy, that's, it's crazy. It's super admirable and I know that she's only gonna get better and better and she'll probably do more things. She's doing the writing, she might do directing. Who knows what she's capable of, she's, all right, well, that was my acting analysis on Mia Goth. What are my personal feelings on Mia Goth? Um, she's my second celebrity crush. I'm sorry, there has to be a number one and I've already had a number one for a long time. But outside of that, uh, I think she's everybody's celebrity crush right now. So it's kind of like, you know, but I mean, I've talked about it already. I think she has the potential to be so much more because she's already so good at what she does. She's kind of going to be like a roundhouse ass kicking like unbeatable force. I think Mia Goth has that it factor. She's got that AX factor. And I mean, her work shows, her acting shows, her writing shows, it's incredible. I already own two movies with her in it. One of them mostly because of her and both of them because they're just good properties. These are good films in less than a year, mind you. And I went to go see both of these movies in theaters. Pearl, I've seen three times already. And when Maxine comes out, I don't fucking know what I'm gonna do, man. I, good thing I have the Regal app. This is not a sponsorship, but because of the Regal app, I've been able to just watch these movies like back to back to back. I have no money and spend no money. It's perfect. Yeah, that's gonna do it for this acting analysis. The next one is going to be Nick Cage and you guys won't have to wait two months for the next one because I'll be filming that one later in the week. So it's gonna be coming out. Although I do have some other special projects for y'all and uh, can't wait for y'all to see them, y'all. All right guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, so long and support Mia Goth and watch all of her projects, please. Bye.